Hola estudiantes, hoy vamos a hablar de direct object pronouns, complementos direct, directos. Um, we're going to talk about direct object pronouns. Say by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe what they are, know what they are, and be able to use them generally, at least fill in blanks with them. We'll do more stuff in class, but um, direct object pronouns. Here we go. Um, let's get right to, okay, direct object pronouns. Okay. In English class, the answer you probably came up with when asked what is a direct object pronoun probably sounded like something like, it directly receives the action of the verb. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that the verb, it direct, it action. Okay, so let's clarify what that means, directly receives the action of a verb. Okay, we'll look at a sentence like this. Matt gave the book to John. Where is our subject? Okay. Our subject is going to be, of course, Matt. He is the one that is performing the action. He's, he's the one conjugating the verb. Okay, here's our verb. So we have our subject, Matt. And now we have the book to John. We've got two elements here. Which one is, a, our, which one is our direct object pronoun? Which one is directly receiving the action of the verb? Now some people might say, well, it was given to John, so John is receiving the book. No, John is receiving the book. He's not receiving the action. Well, what do you mean, Senor? Well, let's, an easy way to do it is look at the word gave. Look at the verb. And you ask yourself, what is being given? Well, Matt is giving, but what is being given? The book is what is being given. So the book is the one that is directly receiving the action of the verb. Okay. John, by the way, is indirectly receiving the action. He's receiving the book, um, but indirect object pronouns, we'll, we'll deal with that in another lesson. So I'm just going to go ahead and cross this one off for now. Okay, so Matt gave the book. The book is being given. It is a direct object. And in this state, it's a noun. It's still just a noun. And we ask ourselves, well, what's a pronoun? How do we make it a direct object pronoun? Well, you'll remember that, you know, can response again from English class, Pronouns replace nouns. Yes. So what would replace what would we replace the book with if we were to replace it with something? Well, probably with it. Matt gave it to John. Okay. Let's look at the pronouns in Spanish. I'm sorry, the direct object pronouns in Spanish, because we've got several. We've got reflexive and we've got subject pronouns, but right at the direct object pronouns. Me, te, me, you. Lo and la both mean it. Nos, us. Nos means us in this case. Os, y'all in Spain or you guys. And los and las is the plural of lo and la. So if lo and la mean it, what is the plural of it? I have students that say its. No, you don't just add an s to make it plural. It changes to them. So me, te, lo, la. Me, you, it. Nos, os, los, las. Us, you guys. Them. And you notice that it's lo and la, los and las. By this point, it would probably be pretty basic to figure out that lo is the masculine, la is the feminine. Okay, let's get to one of these. Direct object pronouns. We've got the list of them there. Now, I'm talking to somebody and I say, hey, Pablo es mi amigo. You know, what are we going to say there? Pablo es mi amigo. Do you know him? What would we say for him? Lo. Easy. Pablo es mi amigo. Lo conoces? You know him? Now we could say tú lo conoces or lo conoces tú. That would probably sound better, but um, yeah, lo is him. You know what? I'm sorry. I just realized that when we went through these, I just called it it, but it's also him and her. Him, her, it. Okay. My bad. I forgot about calling them, calling the person a person. Okay, next one. No hice mi tarea. I didn't do my homework. Tengo que hacer. I didn't do my homework. I have to do it. Okay, so what is the it going to be for homework? Okay, well, it's going to be la, because it's la tarea. Tengo que hacerla. Whoa, wait a second here, because on this last slide, we put it before the verb. Now, in this slide, we're connecting it to the end. What's going on here? Well, just like we did in... Um, with reflexive verbs, yeah, with reflexive verbs, we learned that the pronoun either goes before the conjugated verb or connected to the infinitive. Once again, before the conjugated verb 
or connected to the infinitive. What was that? Before the conjugated verb or connected to the infinitive in most cases. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so we, we took what was similar in the last one and we just switched it around a little. No hice mi tarea, I didn't do my homework. Tengo que hacer, instead of saying tengo que hacer it, now we're going to put it before the conjugated instead of connected to the infinitive. So what are we going to put there? No hice mi tarea, la tengo que hacer. I have to do it. Okay. ¿Puedes enviar la carta a tu abuela? Can you send the letter to your grandma? ¿Puedes enviar la carta a tu abuela? Mamá, envié ayer. Mom, I sent yesterday. What did you send yesterday? The letter. What would the letter be looking up at this chart? Mamá, la envié ayer. I sent it yesterday. Here we go. Mete Lola, no sos los las. Le gusta mi nuevo palo de golf. I bought yesterday. Compré ayer. I bought it yesterday. So what did I buy? I bought a palo de golf. Is it el palo or la palo? It's el palo, so no, it's masculine. Yo lo compré ayer. I bought it yesterday. Uh, YOLO. Okay, next one. ¿Dónde compraste los cepillos de dientes? Where did you buy the brushes of teeth, the toothbrushes? Yo compré, I bought, en la farmacia. También compré pasta dental. So I bought, what did I buy? Ah, oh, the toothbrushes. So them, I bought them. Los cepillos de dientes, so I see it's masculine and plural, so in the blank I will put, Yo los compré en la farmacia. También compré pasta dental. Okay, that is your quick overview of direct object pronouns. We'll practice them more in class. Um, in fact, you've seen these before because when you learned lo siento in Spanish 1, literally what you were saying is I feel it. Like you feel it in your heart. You, you feel bad for what you did. Lo siento, I'm sorry. So you've used these before a little bit, um, but now we're going to start really diving in and, and working with them. So your homework for tomorrow. Um, okay, write these three sentences in Spanish. Um, we're referring to a book. We're referring to a book. How would you tell somebody, I don't have it. I don't have it. Okay, number two. We're, we are referring to, oh, thinking of vocab this chapter. Let's say um, the basketballs. I don't have them. No, no, I just did. I don't have. Um, I want them. Like we're talking about basketballs. I want them. How would you say I want them? Okay, the third one. Um, we're talking about a teacher at the school. Let's say it's a female teacher. And you want to say, I know her. How would you say, I know her? Okay, your third one, I know her. Okay, gracias chicos. Eso es todo. Hasta, hasta mañana. Adios. Chao. Whatever.